Yeah, that's a chunk of meat right there. Tastes like it's been walking around out there this morning. <laughs> well, good morning, Hobby Homesteaders. Uh, we've got a good video for you today. We are going to process our Cornish cross meat, meat birds. They are eight weeks old, so uh, it's about time. Uh, we got us a freezer that we're gonna fill up with chicken, so uh, we're excited about that. Now, I understand this video is not gonna be for everyone, so uh, you know if this is not your cup of tea, just pass this one on by. But uh, if you're interested in raising some of your own broilers and uh, you want to learn a bit, a little bit about the process, we'll show you what we do. Um, we've only done a couple of flocks, so we've still got some to learn, but uh, we made it through the process and ended up with some pretty good chicken out of the deal. So. Uh, We'll show you our uh, our setup and how we uh, go through the process, how we pluck the birds and that whole business. So uh, we'll try to explain everything that we're doing along the way. I hope you enjoy it. Good morning, Chuck and Patty. How you doing? Is that the good stuff? All right, so we just about got everything set up and ready to roll. We, uh, we're heating up the water right now, so we'll be ready to scald. So I'm gonna kind of take you around and show you our setup and what we're planning on doing. Um, usually what I do is I kill them, pluck them, hand them over, and my wife guts them and uh, cuts them up and uh, puts them in the cooler. So uh, once we get all, the, all of the chickens plucked and ready to go, then I'll jump in and start cutting them up but I'm not as good at it so uh, anyway and I don't enjoy that part as much but, too. I don't actually enjoy the killing part at all oh, but, anyway um, but we get through it and then we end up with a lot of good uh, good food to eat yeah Caden Caden helps he's he's kind of our little disruptor all right so we've got uh, a tub full of ice and a cooler full of ice because that's what we've got to work with I went to buy a big cooler last night but the cheapest one I could find was 70 bucks and I didn't want to spend 70 bucks on a cooler so we'll just use a tub all right so the first thing I wanted to point out is if you're gonna do this you've got to have a good set of knives and we found these at Rural King they're just for you know cutting up deer and, and that sort of thing um, they've got uh, a set of knives here here Caden pull that cardboard off of there uh, now this is a pretty cool set um, it's got a, a skinning knife, a caping knife, and a bone knife, but uh, they work for, you know, filleting and the whole works. And they come with a sharpener, so you've got a uh, coarse 
sharpener that you slide it through first a few times and then a fine to finish it off and it actually keeps the knives really really good and sharp um, so we've used these uh, several times and Cameron's uh, cut up the animals he's trapped and all that with them too so um, really good set of knives come from Rural King we like those all right so this is our uh, killing cone hugging cone whatever you want to call it um, it's actually a road cone Okay, and I've got that board in there to prop it out away from the tree so that the blood drips in the bucket. So the purpose behind this is, you know, people used to just lay a chicken on a stump and chop its head off and then they'd run around and like a chicken with their head cut off. And, uh, you know, the extra stress of all of that and bruising up the meat when they flop around and all is uh, something we want to try to avoid. And, and this kind of, when you put them upside down into this cone and pull their head through the bottom, the blood runs to their head and it kind of stuns them to where when you cut their neck open and, and drain the blood out that they don't uh, they don't feel it and uh, so it's kind of a quick and easy uh, process one thing when you set up your bucket underneath it to catch the blood be sure you put some water in it first because if you don't by the time you get done you'll have a really nasty mess that won't come out of your bucket so that's just a little tip i've learned along the way so next we've got our scalding pot now this is the first time we've actually used this setup this is our turkey fryer um and we just disinfected it don't get on the pallet buddy i don't want to dump it over that's hot water in there i want you to stay back from that too um so this uh turkey fryer has a 20 minute timer on it so the heat kicks off after 20 minutes and actually it worked out just perfect it kicked off right at 150 degrees which is what we're looking for now as we start dipping birds in it it'll cool off so we'll have to kick the heat back on and and keep it right at 148 to 150 151 degrees any hotter than that and you'll start cooking the meat and the skin will come off when you throw it in the plucker and that sort of thing so you don't want to run it any hotter than that but if it's any cooler than that then when you throw them in the plucker all the feathers won't come out so there's a sweet spot and once you find it it works really well so that's kind of what you want to work toward just keep an eye on your temperature and keep it right around that 150 mark now our plucker we bought this yard bird plucker which is is a really cool setup he's got these little rubber fingers in here and then the bottom part turns when you kick the power on and it just rolls the bird around in there knocks the uh, feathers off of it kick it on there Kate. yeah see all right go ahead and shut it off now one thing about this it's got a place to hook up a garden hose right here so it sprays water in there for you i have tried it both ways and where we uh don't have really good water pressure out here at the barn it seems to work better for me to just use the garden hose and the sprayer and point it where i need it to keep the feathers from clogging it up you will have if you don't have enough water running through it you'll get feathers clogging up inside there and it'll cause you a little bit of problems but honestly we've had very little of that unless we were trying to put too big of birds in it like our turkey <laughs> um, so it works pretty well it's got a place uh, underneath here to set a bucket to catch feathers if i can find it yeah see the, the little hole right there so it's got a little sweeper underneath that wheel that spins around and it pushes the feathers out that little hole so you'll have a little pile of feathers right here when you're done or you can put a bucket in under it to catch them and after we get through with that plucking process then I hand the birds over to the table where we gut them and uh, put them into the coolers and um, once we've got everything finished then we'll actually take the birds and we've got some heat shrink bags that we'll show you and uh, we'll freshen up the pot and disinfect it and put some clean water in it and then you warm them up just a little bit to dip them dip the heat shrink bags in uh, the hot water and it'll uh, seal them up and it works really well for storing the birds in the freezer one other thing real quick uh, if you see i've got the cord to the plucker stuck on this electric fence post up off the ground the reason for that of course is once you get into this process you actually you have a lot of water going everywhere and so i don't want my cord connection laying down in a water puddle somewhere and me stepping in it or caden stepping in it and getting shocked so uh, i actually shut the electric fence off and uh, so that's how we set that up
first end of the cone. He's cranking a round like a ball. Yeah. So we got her heated up now. Now I'm kind of at the top end of the range I like to be at. We're at 151, 152, so. Just wait, buddy. Push him around in that scalder for probably 40 seconds or so, is about right. No, 30 is not. Oh, Let's pull that pretty easy. I'd say we're about ready. Sometimes a few little pin feathers maybe here and there, but uh, this one came out just nearly perfect. Um, so that temperature is just about right. Everything's real good right there. Um, so it's about time to get busy cutting them up. You know, one thing I thought I would share, you know, some of you may be watching and thinking you, you're surprised to, that we have the kids involved in something like this. Um, and, and we kind of have from the very beginning. And I'll tell you the main reason why is, you know, if you eat meat, something had to give its life for you to have that meat. And I think when you're separated from that process, then you kind of maybe lose sight of how important that is. So if, you're, if you see the process and you, you realize what goes behind it, I think it will help you to be less wasteful and help you to appreciate what you do have. All right, so Janice going to show you how she cuts up our birds. All right, so first I cut their feet off. And so if you just kind of take it and bend it, you can kind of see where the joint is between the bones. So that cuts pretty easy, a lot easier than you'd think. There's a, a just All right, so this is an oil gland and I'm told that that tastes pretty bad. Um, I've left some of it on before. I've cut it off before, but this time I'm going to cut a lot of that off there. That's that's its cloaca. So I like to cut that off because I don't want to see that when I'm about to eat it. Cut all that off, and sometimes, like I've been seeing where they we've taken food from them. Um, They've been eating a lot of grass, and so sometimes a little bit of that will come out, but these haven't been too bad. <clears throat> Next, this is a lot of loose skin, and I like to cut as low as possible because if you cut too high, then the skin will kind of work its way up and not cover the breast. So, just I pull that out because I don't want to cut any of the insides and just make a slit in it. And then just kind of carefully with this membrane or whatever this is here pull it out and try to slice through it kind of tear that and then I'm probably a little slow with this next part because if you um, bust the gallbladder like that bile or whatever's in it it's really green it's like bright green if it gets on the meat, it'll ruin it. So, um, 
I try to be really careful not to do that. And then I just, you can kind of, everything is just kind of connected in there, but you can kind of just work it loose with your fingers and start pulling that out. So this I've cut free from the other end, so I should be able just to pull that out. Sometimes it's a little hard. If there's very much poop in there, you can kind of just work it out so it's outside of the body. But so you don't break it free inside of the bird. We took the food away from them 24 hours ago, so they're relatively cleaned out. Yeah, these are getting pretty good. That I want to cut off. So I'm not sure what everything is here. Um, there's intestines. This, I believe, is the stomach. Are you saving any livers? No. No, let's um, save livers. There's a heart, a the livers. I don't know a lot of people eat livers, but we don't. And then there's the gallbladder. And that's what you don't want to break because it's, it's like bright green. And it makes a mess and goes everywhere. I have busted a few before. Yeah, if you bust it, you know it. <laughs> so we just put all the guts in a bucket here with the feet. I'm gonna cut that off. <coughs> try to look and make sure I got everything out of there. One out. Okay. Like a windpipe or something. Yeah, they came out with everything else. Sometimes they get stuck in there a little bit and you have to, they make a tool even to scrape the lungs out, but I've never really found a use for it because they're pretty easy to pull out. Don't let him get away. Then, just kind of keep out here. Hose it off. Sometimes they're a little slippery, so they want to keep out your hands. Chicken mama. Yeah, buddy. So we got all the birds processed and that's that's the hard part out of the way um, I don't know about you all, but I don't necessarily enjoy that part of the process. It's just a, a necessary evil I guess, but uh, we, we got through it. We got them all processed. We got all the birds soaking in ice She left some of them whole and some of them she cut up so uh, it, uh, She cut them up into the cuts that we would eat uh, and they'd be easy to just pull out and thaw out and use so uh, Next she's gonna pack everything in uh, heat shrink bags So I'll have her show you what she's got to pack them in and how she does that process, but uh, Hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the process if you're getting ready to get started 
this is our third flock of birds that we're going through so we're we're getting a little bit better at it figuring out what works and what doesn't it definitely didn't go perfect the first time it didn't go perfect this time but it went a lot smoother than it has in the past so uh, so that was nice and uh, as you go through it you'll learn learn more of the tricks but hopefully you saw a few things that you can use uh, in your own process so we've got heat shrink bags here um, I think we bought them from Strongbirds um, so we'll just put the whole chicken in there Make sure you drain out the water. For some reason, they say to put it in there head first. So that's what we'll do. I'll just try to get as much of the air out of it as we can. And we have our water at about eh, almost 200 degrees, somewhere between 180 200 is fine. You just stick it in there for like two to three seconds. Maybe use a spoon to hold it down. And then squeeze more water out. It's good to go. Um, we like to weigh them. It's hard to read. 408, 4 pounds, 8 ounces. Zip tie on it. <laughs> got, a, got those from Strongbergs too. Professional. Farm raised poultry. <laughs> how many whole birds we put in there and how many we cut up but uh, birds averaged about four pounds a piece which we're happy with because of the way that we raised them this time we didn't spend uh, uh, quite as long raising them and we controlled their feed intake quite a bit because we wanted to make sure they stay good and healthy and times passed when we raised them and we let them have too much food they would they look nearly bald and they had trouble walking around because they got so big and heavy so these birds were a whole lot healthier when it was time to process them so we've just about finished up for today. In fact, I think Jana's in there cooking a little bit of chicken now. So uh, I look forward to uh, lunch today. We earned it. Uh, we uh, we probably spent about three hours on the whole project today, cutting up 20 birds, which is not bad, especially since we took time to fool with the camera and try to record some of the process and explain it and all that. So uh, yeah, it's it's not too big of a job once you kind of get the hang of it. I can tell you that a couple of the times well, one of the times at least that we processed in the past. Seemed like a whole lot of work. It just about wore us out. But uh, this time, it, it was a whole lot less stressful. And I, we were better with the birds. Uh, it seemed like uh, that the whole process just went a whole lot smoother. So we took some time to set up. And then a couple of things to note is, you know, between the actual processing and, and getting them into ice water, we took some time to clean up uh, all the... Uh, pluckers and put all that stuff away and then we uh, disinfected the tables and got all that stuff set up disinfected the pan so that we'd be ready to stick the heat shrink bags in it and all that so um, that, that stuff takes a little bit of time but we want to try to be as clean as we can about the whole process you know we're obviously doing this outdoors we don't have a uh, processing facility or anything like that to keep it all separate and nice and neat so uh, do the best we can with that but uh, Hopefully you learned something from the process. I really appreciate y'all uh, watching our videos. Like I said, I understand this kind of video is not for everyone, but for those of you who are into homesteading, think about raising your own chickens and uh, that sort of thing, you, you need to learn about the process. And this is exactly how we did it. We took bits and pieces from everybody else's procedures and, and worked those into our own operation here. So uh, we've, we've got a process that works pretty well for us and uh, gives us quite a bit of uh, food. Um, so we're really enjoying it. I uh, want to thank you all for watching. Be sure and subscribe, like our videos, share them with your friends, help our channel to grow, and y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.